Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Rogue ST Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hi, I'm Amy Rogers, and this is your Golf Central update. Tony Finau taking advantage of moving day at the RBC Canadian Open, getting off to a hot start with three birdies and an eagle on the front nine. Following that up with four more birdies on the back, just a lone bogey to offset the day, and he cards an eight under 62. It's the low round of the tournament so far in Canada and also matches his career best. He caught up with Haley Hunter after his round. Tony, eight under par today. That's a career low round for you on the PGA Tour. How are you able to manage the course so well? Yeah, I think I, I got off to a nice start. I birdied the first hole, and a lot of times that'll um, that'll calm you down and just kind of you know get you set on the right uh, right kind of mojo for the day. So that was really it. And cruised cruised along and made some birdies here and there. And then when I made the eagle on nine, I knew you know I was kind of on my way to maybe a special round and. Um, just kind of kind of kept putting one, front, one foot in front of the other and, you know, it turned into a 62, which was nice. I know your putting is something that you've wanted to be a little more consistent with throughout the season, but you're able to drop some putts out there today, third on the day in strokes gained putting. What seemed to click out there for you? Yeah, again, I think, you know, seeing some go in early, I think was nice. It was a confidence booster when you're hitting good putts and they go in. So you start to see the line a little bit better. And um, I've, I've just I've worked extremely hard on my putting. You know, it's part of my game that I've worked the hardest on for over the last few years and, and really since I've been on tour. So uh, it's been trial and error with me. I've tried a few different things, but, uh, you know, this week it's, uh, you know, seems to be working. What seems to work for you? You've tried a few different things you said. Is there anything specific you've changed in your putting stroke? Is it more of a confidence thing? Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of both. You know, um, I'm not, I'm not scared to, you know, tinker around if I'm not feeling good with the putter, and that's what I mean by trial and error. And um, you know, I've been putting conventionally nicely for really the whole season, and um, you know, we'll just keep, just keep it rolling, and, and hopefully make some more tomorrow. The wind seems to pick up here throughout the day. It did a little bit yesterday and today as well. How did that impact your decision-making process with some of your approach shots out there? Yeah, I've been hitting my irons nicely. Um, you just you have to trust trust what you feel like the wind's doing. You know, it's predominantly it was the same pretty much all day. It was swirling. It felt like it was swirling, but it pretty much played the same. So just having that confidence that that's what the wind's doing, and and just being comfortable and, and trusting what your what your number is and hitting the shot. All right, thanks, Tony. Best of luck tomorrow. Thanks. Defending champion Rory McIlroy trying to do something he's never done before in successfully defending his title, and he's well positioned to do just that after a five under 65 on moving day, three birdies and a bogey to go out in 32, and then flawless on the back nine with another three birdies to sit in a tie atop the leaderboard with Tony Finau. He also caught up with Haley Hunter after his round. Roy, great round out there today. Yesterday you talked to me about you felt like you left some of your approach shots out there. Would you make your approach shot game today? It seemed like you dialed a few more of your wedges in. I did, yeah. I, I, I took a little bit of time in my warm-up today to hit some more wedges and, and just sort of get them dialed, dialed in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and probably I, I got some better numbers today for wedges too, you know, some more fuller shots instead of, you know, three-quarter shots. Then that I you know, had a three-quarter number at the last there and hit a nice shot, but... Um, yeah, overall, better day. I drove the ball pretty good today as well. So, you know, once again, I keep saying, once you put yourself in position off the tee here, you're going to give yourself some birdie chances. And, um, you know, it was nice to see, you know, some better iron shots and some better wedge shots. And, um, yeah, overall, just a really good day in a good position going into tomorrow. Would have been nice for that putt on the last to go in. But, um, you know, 65, I would have taken that at the start of the day. And, um you're looking forward to, to, to being in the final group tomorrow. You had some fun in that birdie on 15 today. I'm just curious because I know the wind was kind of swirling out there today. You flew that over the green. What kind of happened there? You, you had some fun with the fans. Yeah, um, I thought it was sort of left or right and, and maybe a touch in, if anything. And I had 253 and it was like 14 up the hill. So like 267 equivalent, which is, you know, if the wind's just off the left, it should be a perfect five wood for me. Um, and I flushed the five wood and um, I guess I flew it straight over the back of the green. So I might have just got a gust down at some point mm -hmm. because it's funny, like Keith hit his third shot and, and definitely got a gust back into and came up, you know, 35 feet short. So, yeah, it, it's a little gusty out here. And I think once it gets in the trees, it swirls around a little bit. So just something to, to keep an eye on tomorrow. You've talked all season long about the importance of putting those four solid rounds together. What do you need to do tomorrow in this final round to secure your 21st PGA Tour win? Yeah, um, 
you know, I need to do the same things. You know, I need to put it in play, I need to hit good iron shots and just keep giving myself chances. Um, sort of try to, you know, to sort of, you know, beat the, not beat the golf course into submission, but, you know, fairways, greens, chances. And, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm putting well enough to, to, to take advantage of that. And, uh, you know, I think I just need to set myself a target tomorrow and, and try to get there. Uh, because obviously there is low scores out there with, with what we've seen with, with Tony and JT. So set myself a number, um, not really worry about the guys around me and, and just focus on that. Thanks, Rory. See you out here tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Justin Thomas making a move on moving day, jumping 18 spots up the leaderboard with that 63 for one of the low rounds of the day. He sits just two back heading into the final round and will play in that final group alongside Rory McIlroy and Tony Finau. He spoke with the media after his round. I drove it a little bit better today, but when I didn't, I just I, I just was trying to make par. I mean, it, it just... This rough is so long that it's not necessarily a place where when you do get out of position, you can attack and still try to make birdie. And I feel like I, I, I did that today, and I've really done it all week. Um, and if you drive it well, I mean, you, you do have a lot of scoring clubs in. And I'm definitely not hitting my wedges as well as I would like. I've, I've hitting a lot of short irons and wedges, kind of that 12 to 15 foot range when I feel like I, I generally hit them inside of 10 feet or I at least would like to. Um, so it's just staying patient because you can have rounds like uh, today out there on this golf course. Do you feel like you have a good idea of when you can be more aggressive out there approaching the green and where you need to be a little bit more safe based on what you've seen the past three days? I mean, tomorrow's pins are obviously going to be a lot tougher. Yeah, I, th I think you truly just kind of have to take the course and the hole for what it is. You know, you get a hole... Um, I mean, you get a hole like number three, you know, the first round, that pin was very accessible with the wind. That made the hole very... play. I would think, under par. I mean... Uh, as easy as that hole's probably going to play, and then you get a wind and a, and a pin like today, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we're just trying to kind of put in the middle of the green and make a three, and if you make two, it's a steal. So it's really just taking it one shot at a time, one hole at a time, and then if you put the ball in play off the tee and you have a short club, then you're able to tack, but if not, you just kind of pick your way around. Justin, at one point today, I think there were seven players in the top 25 in the world ranking in the top of the leaderboard, and it's moving a little bit. What do you think that says about this tournament and specifically about the PGA Tour? What can it, it can deliver in terms of entertainment? Yeah, uh, it's really cool. Obviously, with everything going on, you know, this week was going to be very special regardless, but I think it just, um, I mean, it makes, I mean, without sounding cheesy, it makes me pretty happy inside, you know, seeing this. I mean, there's no other place I'd, I'd want to be playing, and it's just... Obviously, with a tournament like this and the history that it has and how long, you know, it's 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 had a lot of great past champions and, and venues and, and drama. And, uh, you know, it looks like it has the potential tomorrow to produce a little bit more of that and create some more history. Well, it is a star-studded leaderboard for the final round of the RBC Canadian Open. Rory McIlroy and Tony Finau tied at the top will play in that final group on Sunday alongside Justin Thomas in what will be some must-see golf. Just lurking a few strokes back, Sam Burns, as well as Wyndham Clark, who held the lead over the first two days. And now here's a look at the leaderboard at the ShopRite LPGA Classic. Just a 54-hole event, so two days in the books. It's Frida Schinholt who has jumped out to the outright lead as she is chasing her very first win on the LPGA Tour. Lauren Coughlin, Jody Ewart Shadoff, and Morgan Mitrow all chasing their first win as well. But lurking just a few strokes back sits Lydia Ko and Jin Young Ko struggling to a disappointing 71 on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.